In the name of God, the Creator, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. It is good to be with you here on this All Saints Sunday. And I bring you greetings from uh, Bishop Marianne, who I work for. And on this All Saints Sunday, I just know that some of you are thinking, well, what happened to the readings for All Saints? These aren't the readings for All Saints. These are the readings for the 24th Sunday after Pentecost. Anybody? No? <laughs> Well, it's my fault that we have our readings. Actually, I was given a choice by a rector, Sari. He said, you can use All Saints or you can use the readings that would have been for this Sunday. And so I looked at all of them and I thought, what do I want to hear two days before the election? And what I wanted to hear was, love God, love your neighbor. Jesus says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Jesus says these words during an unusually friendly conversation with one of the scribes. You know, when we hear Jesus talking to the religious authorities, they're usually coming at him. But this man, this man comes truly asking a question. Which is the greatest commandment of them all? And Jesus responds. And he agrees. He says, yes, to love God with all the heart, with all the understanding, with all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself. This is much more important than all the burnt offerings and sacrifices. Wow, he gets it. I mean, how often does someone get what Jesus says right there and then, right? <laughs> but then, of course, it comes back to us. Do we get it? Well, the getting of loving God and loving one's neighbor is the Christian life. It's what we engage in over our whole lifetime. It's the heart of our life with Christ. It is the beginning, the end, and all that comes in between. And yet we get distracted, especially when we're anxious, especially when we have something on our mind, like right now. I mean, most people I've talked to are thinking about the election and how they're going to get through the next two days. Now, I must say that other people have other things in their mind, and we need to remember that. You know, all those wars, all that violence in the rest of the world, still going on. Some people are dealing with the loss of a loved one. Some people are dealing with a difficult diagnosis. And some, like a good friend of mine, are wondering when they're going to get their job after waiting for months and months and months. A lot comes at us in this life. And a lot just wants to distract us from loving God and loving our neighbor, the very work that Jesus asks us to do. And maybe you're in a place where you're like, look, I'm just barely holding on here. I'm just barely getting up and going around. How could I do what seems to be this one-way love going out? I need something coming towards me. I need sustaining. And yet, Jesus calls us to do this work. Because when we hold on to that touchstone of loving God and loving others, when we engage in that active love, we become aware of another active love that's coming right at us from God, that's coming at us each and every moment of the day. And I want to share a story with you about an experience I had last weekend about when I felt called to love, when I felt my love going out and then feeling it come back. I was at a workshop called Healing from Internalized Oppression, which is designed to help people of color move towards racial healing, reconciliation, and justice in their personal lives. You may be familiar with Sacred Ground, which is a similar program. I know you do it here at this church. But this one, this workshop, was specifically for people of color, and I and several people from our diocese went. 
And to get started, the facilitator had us work on the community agreement to kind of to hold our work over the next day and a half. And she began by asking us a question. What word comes to mind when you think of someone who you feel completely safe with? Who in your life makes you feel safe? And what word do you use to describe that? And people said things like love, trust, supported, listened to, cared for. And then she said, now say what that looks like. So we took our notes, we shared in groups, we put it up in the walls and big pieces of paper, and then we had to share with the whole group our word and what it looked like. And very quickly, we must have been at the second person, we discovered that it was really hard to describe what it looked like for someone to make us feel safe in that way, whether it was love or respect or listen to. And we resorted to showing what it looked like. And so all these people are standing up and saying, well, it looks like this when someone's listening to me. Or if I'm feeling supportive, they're like, and they're nodding to me, or they're moving towards me. They were showing us their facial expressions and the movements the person would make. It was fascinating and it was wonderful. Because I realized that even though the question had been about safety, the people in the room were sharing the love language they needed with everyone else. And I found myself in a better place to love all the people in the room, even though there was no way I was going to remember what 30 people had said. Somehow, I felt better able to love them and at the same time, I felt loved by them because I had shared. And the room eased, and there was something different about the whole atmosphere, and I thought, oh, this is what our country needs, this is what we need. Just a touch of that, a feeling of that love going out to one another and that love coming back in. And I believe this is what God is calling us to, what Jesus is calling us to do when he says, love God, love your neighbor. Because when we do that, we open up ourselves to experience and know and see the love, ha the love God has that's coming right into us every second of the day. But what is that love language? I mean, how are we going to go around to people in the grocery store maybe and say, so, think about the person you feel safe with. Can you describe that for me? Hmm, don't really recommend that. So how can we know this love language? Well, we know God's love language. We get it in scripture. And I think about Matthew 25. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat and I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. And I was in prison and you came to visit me. I think of Amos 5. But lest justice roll down like water and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. I also think about the Psalm, Psalm 150. Praise him with timbrel and dancing. Praise him with the strings and pipe. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. All of that is God's love language that we are given. And given that we have two baptisms today, Louisa, hi Louisa, and Andrew, who's now gone to sleep. If we look at the baptismal promises, we will hear God's love language. God's love language that we are inviting them to live their lives into, that we and I live each and every day. So how do we get through the next two days or the next week or the next month? I think we need to be very intentional because yes, we know, love God, love your neighbor, we hear it all the time. But I want to invite you to be extremely intentional in these next two days. Because even if you're not feeling anxious, 
there are others out there who are wandering, who are fear, or afraid. And so love God, whether it is in meditation or in prayer, taking some quiet time, listening to a song. I've been listening to a song that reminds me of that Psalm 150. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. That's been restoring me. Just one way, very intentionally, to remind yourself of the love you have for God. And then for others, while you may not have their love language, it might be as simple as seeing someone and praying for them. Maybe pick three people every day and just look at them carefully and pray for them. It might be listening ever so intently to someone, whether it be a casual conversation or more intense con conversation. Listen for their love language. And listening itself is loving the other. It might be actually helping another, if you can figure out a good way that works for you to do that. But it in those acts of loving, of loving God and loving one another, that we turn ourselves to what will truly sustain us, the love of God. As we see the image of God in one another, we are reminded that God is everywhere walking with, for, with us. Yes, this world is full of upheaval. Yes, there is much uncertainty. But God is present. And God loves us. So hold on to that and love as you go. And we will be all right. Amen.